welcome everybody. And I know we'll have people coming in and that is no problem, um, especially this time of year. People have lots of commitments. And so I'm happy to be here with you today. Um, up until a couple weeks ago, I actually was a program director for the Better Business Bureau serving Dayton and the Miami Valley. And before that, I was the business reference librarian for yeah. Dayton Metro Library. Oh. I have um, taken a, a time away to be able to lean in with my kids who are in junior high, believing this is a really important time with them. So um, I am concentrating on networking and so forth rather than working full time at the moment and um, running interference for two boys who are 12 going on 35. So happy to be with you today to have adult conversation instead of conversation that revolves around backpacks and Chromebooks and water bottles and lunch boxes and so forth. So um, Shelby asked me to come today and talk to you about running efficient meetings or effective productive meetings. And I would like just for a, a moment or two to kind of get a sense if there are specific things that you would like us to cover today. I have some goals um, on the agenda that I will definitely talk about, but I wanna know if there are any um, hot button issues that you're hoping that I will cover as we go along because I can certainly add those into the dialogue. Anybody have anything that's a big concern for you? All right, well, if you think of something as I go along, feel free to add it into the chat and I will build it in. So I'm gonna go ahead and share screen here so you can see my slides. And I will certainly um, send these to Shelby so that she can share them with you um, at her convenience. So I wanna know just um, by a show of hands, or maybe I'll even be able to see the smiles on your faces. How many of you have had the opportunity to sit through a meeting that looked like this? Patty, it's okay, you can go ahead and admit it because I know your boss, but I won't tell her if you say that. <laughs> um, many of us have been to meetings that didn't feel like they were productive, effectively run. Um, you weren't sure of the point of the meeting or maybe someone hijacked the meeting and you were listening to their topic off tangent um, on tan that was a tangential topic instead of the topic at hand and so forth. So it is a big problem. It is maybe not quite as much of a problem since so many of us are still working from home that we have um, become a little bit more productive on Zoom. But I also know that many offices have opened back up and are working more at um, full capacity than they were just even six or eight months ago. So I know this um, will become a problem. So let's, let's look at what we're gonna actually talk about today. I have divided the presentation up into 10 sort of tips or topics, if you will, over the idea of planning, leading the meeting and follow up after the meeting. And what does that actually look like? What are some things that you need to do ahead of time? One of the things that I will say is good meeting etiquette and efficiency starts well before the meeting ever begins. Um, and that is with your planning. And the first thing that we wanna talk about is the fact that there are different types of meetings and they are more appropriate at different times given what the goal of the meeting or the purpose of the meeting actually is. We have the informational meeting, which is more like a lecture, if you will, somebody's coming in, it's a sales presentation. Um, oftentimes this is an element of a decision-making meeting where somebody's doing presentations or several people are doing presentations for you. There is a decision-making meeting where the goal of that meeting is to make a decision. I can remember years ago, um, one that comes to mind was deciding on running 
a levy campaign for a library I was running at that time, right? So that was a big decision-making meeting. Um, there are often several players, whether they are potential vendors or salespeople or um, candidates interviewing for a job. There are several players that will share information and this decision-making piece, just like the informational piece, can be part of any meeting. The update meeting, leaders are providing project updates. So if you imagine this is when um, your CEO, your department head pulls you together and asks, committee meetings often fall into the update category, especially if they are um, driven towards planning an event or uh, working on a project together of some sort. So um, the Troy Strawberry Festival, I know that's a big event up your direction. In that, uh, I'm sure there are several committees that meet that plan different elements of that festival. And I'm sure they meet on a regular basis, whether that's weekly, quarterly, um, every month, whatever. And those would definitely be update meetings. One of the things that I see happening, and I have been an offender of, of this practice myself, Oftentimes update meetings get canceled. Um, a lot of people can't attend um, or the leader can't be there or maybe we don't have a lot to talk about so we cancel those meetings. And invariably when I have made that decision to cancel a meeting like this, um, something comes up in the next week or so that we really should have talked about at an update meeting. And so I encourage people to carry forth those meetings even if they are short and informal because I think it gives you the chance to head off something that may come out of the woodwork a little bit later. Now obviously you can't guarantee that nothing's going to come up later but it does give you the opportunity to kind of touch base with everybody even if they just send in a written report of some sort on their progress. And then finally we have a working meeting. Um, many times these come, these come about because um, a group is working on a shared project. One of the things that I say about a working meeting is that it discourages procrastination because if somebody knows that they have something that has to be turned in by a certain point in time, it gives them the chance to um, have a deadline in mind uh, rather than trying to figure out where do I go from here. All right. So we talked about planning meetings and what does that actually look like ahead of time. One of the first pieces of a strong meeting is creating a strong agenda. You want to send out that agenda before the meeting. How many have been to, just by a head nod, how many have been to a meeting of some sort where they put the agenda on the table in front of you as you arrived for the meeting, right? And the challenge with that is you don't necessarily know ahead of time what to expect from that meeting. And sending out an agenda ahead of time also makes people realize or allows them the opportunity to prepare if they are part of the agenda for that meeting. And one of the reasons we have difficulty um, getting agendas out a, ahead of time is because we're overcommitted. We just don't think about what's happening with that meeting until a day or two right before the meeting. And then there's maybe not time to send it out ahead. So um, in this time crunch world that we live in, even if the best you can do is to send it out via email the morning of the meeting, and maybe it's a lunch meeting or it's an after work meeting or whatever, even if you can only send that out just a little bit before the meeting, I feel it's better to do that than to wait and try to share it with people at the meeting. The other thing I will say is sending out the agenda ahead of time can be a good reminder for a particular meeting. You want to take time to designate responsibilities on that agenda. And by that, I mean, who is responsible for that particular report? Um, is Patty responsible for follow-up related to this um, sales decision? Is David responsible for giving us a committee report from this particular committee? Who has the responsibility for doing the things that are listed, the items that are on that agenda? 
Um, one of the things that I will say about this designation is it does allow people the wake up call if there's something, a report of some sort that maybe they have forgotten, or maybe it's a nudge because there was a, a action item that was given to you last meeting that you haven't had a chance to accomplish yet. And this gives you the chance to kind of make those phone calls or write up a description or whatever it is that, that is allotted to you. Then you also want to include, what is the purpose of this meeting? Why are we gathering to meet? What are the potential action items? And I have never found this to be very effective, but um, a lot of professionals like to include a time allotment on the agenda. I worked for um, a library director once who always allotted five minutes or 10 minutes or 15 minutes. Um, the challenge I think comes into play with time allotment on the agenda is you may not know exactly how much time something's going to take to discuss or resolve. And one issue early on can get you completely off that time schedule. So I think that's a matter of personal preference. I do think it's important to list the goal of the meeting and also the action items because that allows someone who's on the fence as to whether they're gonna attend the meeting or not. Um, it allows them the chance to make an educated decision about whether they, whether it's worth their time to attend, okay? Any questions about agendas planning ahead of the meeting? I'm gonna make this, let me see if I can make this. Um, the way I have this set up right now, Shelby, I can't see the chat. So can you, um, wait a minute, here it is. Okay, so I have pulled up the chat now so I can see your questions if you type them into the chat, that will be just fine. All right, let's move on then. So during the meeting, and obviously this is the meat of your work in a meeting. And there are some tips here for how to make the most out of that particular meeting. In doing some research ahead of time before this presentation, um, I found that there are some trends now related to different types or different meeting styles and the way they can create new energy. Um, now, I realize that we've all had our share of Zoom meetings over the last 18 months. Um, so most of these apply to that new or to the um, in-person meeting. But I think there are some great suggestions here to give some consideration to. Has anybody ever been to a standing meeting where y'all just kind of stood around the a countertop, a water cooler, um, maybe, um, maybe uh, like a cafe bar in a, um, an area where maybe employees have the chance to gather a cafeteria or an employee room of some sort. Anybody ever been to a standing meeting? It changes the whole dynamic of that particular meeting. First of all, it makes people move along and it discourages um, talking. It gives you a whole different set of energy because people think and process differently when they're on their feet as opposed to when they're comfortable sitting in a chair. Another suggestion would be a walking meeting. Um, there is a lot of, in fact, I've included a TED talk from a few years ago of an individual who talks about um, sedentary lifestyle, the sitting that we all do at work most days is the smoking of our generation, that it is um, very bad for our health. And she um, is a proponent of having walking meetings, that you all find a walking path and gather together and talk through your particular topics of discussion as you take a walk. Um, I don't know, what is, uh, how does that sound? What does that sound like to you? Anybody up for a walking meeting? The other option, it may not be a great option in Ohio at this time of year, but um, one of the other thoughts would be 
having a meeting outside. Um, it gives people the chance to, um, first of all, any sort of change that you make to your typical meeting style, even if you just change where people are sitting and ask people to sit in a different seat. Um, human beings are creatures of habit. Oftentimes the, leaders, oftentimes the leader sits at the end of the table or in the same spot. If you are the leader of the meeting, try just one time changing where you sit and sit like on the long side of the conference table instead of at the end. And it will completely change the dynamic of how the meeting runs. Um, simply because we view people differently from a different perspective. And then, um, like I mentioned outside, even a new location, taking people out for lunch, meeting in a coffee shop someplace where you've got um, a space that's a little quieter. Maybe um, you take a meeting to a, a public meeting room someplace at your library or at your chamber of commerce, that sort of thing. Meeting culture. This is something that oftentimes is established by the organization as part of their staff culture, but these are some rules that must be established related to how the meeting's going to run. As I said, I'm spending a lot of time at home um, and on duty with my kids these days. They're 12 going on 13, and when I say, um, let your brother finish, we have a lot of interrupting at our house, right? Well, I bet that there are a lot of meetings where you have um, executives and coworkers who act the same way because um, we're excited. We wanna share our ideas, we have a question, we think our question, we don't realize that somebody else is talking, we think our question relates, so we interrupt and, and butt in. So you can set some of those rules. I've also become aware of some companies that are setting um, standards for meetings like no meetings on Fridays so that people can feel free to um, have a Friday off to have a long weekend or that they can have a Friday um, set aside as a work day instead of a day where there are a lot of committee meetings and so forth. And this particular company is even discouraging um, people from going to professional development and so forth on Fridays because they really want people to have the freedom to just be in the office. And I know for myself that that can be a really important time, that just in the office time. And you wanna make sure that people who are going to be on duty during that meeting know what they are expected to do. Um, oftentimes you come around, people ask for a progress report or a committee report. If people didn't realize that that was um, expected, they may have not been prepared for that. They also um, may wimp out on us and say, no report, nothing to report, nothing to share. And so we've not gotten any sort of an update from them at that point in time. Uh, one thing that I think is a good tool in sharing these sort of um, updates and reports is a template, a common template or format that's on like a G drive or whatever for your organization so that everybody has a sense of what are they supposed to bring to the table rather than somebody bringing a more formal written report and other people just orally being able to share information. Having a recommended um, common format or template for reports um, makes it easier to include those in the minutes packet as well. All right, anything on the during the meeting phase? Oops. All right, one of the hottest topics in planning meetings is the meeting pirate, right? So I'm a big fan of Dilbert cartoons. I think a lot of things are said through Dilbert cartoons. I, it's an older cartoon series, right? But I think there are a lot of things that are said in Dilbert cartoons that are very important that I'd like to be able to say out loud, but I'm not in a cartoon, right? So, um, this is my thought on what we wish we could do, right, um, in meetings when somebody hijacks it and, and takes it over. And many times there is a common offender, right, that has taken over that meeting and you all kind of have the sense as soon as they start talking that here's, oh, here we go again, right? Here's 
here's a 15 minute time waste because this person's going to tell a story that maybe doesn't have anything to do with it. Sometimes this is even social hour. Um, people are so busy, uh, they meet only once a month, maybe a board meeting, um, that they're so busy socializing that it's hard to get to the business of the meeting. Um, in that case, if that's the case, I encourage you to have a social hour with some snacks before the meeting so that people have a chance to get some of that out of their system before you move into the action of the meeting itself. And that way too then um, that gives people who tend to come early the chance to have um, a little uh, break and a chance to greet and meet people as they come in. So here number seven of my 10 tips is tips for dealing with a meeting pirate. The first thing is to remember your goal. What is the purpose of this meeting? And remembering your goal, if that's on your agenda, and maybe it's more than one, it doesn't have to just be one um, goal on the agenda, but it is remembering the goal makes it easier to be able to say to someone, you know what, Jim, that is such an interesting story, but I'm not sure it relates to what we're trying to accomplish today here. So maybe you could share that with us after the meeting. You can also say, you know what, we're here to make a decision about X, Y, Z. We need to hear the committee reports and we really value everybody's time. So let's dive right into those committee reports and hold your comments until the end. You can use time as your excuse. Uh, remember who's in charge. So you're the timekeeper if you're the one who's in charge or maybe someone else who's taking notes is the one who's um, keeping you on track time-wise, being aware of the time. So you can always use time as an excuse. I really appreciate your perspective. I'd like to hear more about that. Maybe we can schedule a time um, outside of this meeting to talk further about that, but I think we better get back to the issues at hand here. You can be polite the first time you um, correct somebody like I just did. So you can say those things politely, but you may need to be more direct the second time. And this is hard. It, it is very hard. Um, even for people who run meetings on a regular basis, it can be really hard to say, you know what, I've asked that we really stick to the comments at hand or to the issues at hand. So let's hold off on any more comments like that because they're not helping us get to our finished product or we're not finalizing our work here today. So let's hold that off for discussion outside of the meeting. All right. And then avoid giving them an opening. Now I have asked um, several times during this presentation, does anyone have any questions or comments or whatever? If you know you have a, a meeting pirate, um, someone who's an, a habitual offender who um, comes in and takes up time, you want to make sure you word that very carefully. Um, instead of leaving it open to, does anybody have any questions or comments? You may need to say more specifically, does anyone have any questions or comments related to whatever the topic at hand is? Because that gives you an opening then to be able to say, you know what, I really think that doesn't relate to what we're talking about right now. So can you hold that until the end of the meeting and we'll, we'll see what we can do about circling back to it. And then you just don't. So any questions? I know this is a hot topic that people often um, have an interest in learning how to do this. So any questions about this particular topic? All right. And then you have, what are we going to do after the meeting? What's the follow-up we need to do after the meeting? We're going to reiterate action items. I actually think this is a good step. Um, you might send this out as part of the meeting notes or um, minutes or notes, but I actually think it's a good idea at the end of the meeting before you adjourn to actually reiterate action items. Um, I had a supervisor recently who did that at the end of each of our weekly update meetings. Um, she would go through what she was responsible for. Um, I would go through my understanding of what I was responsible for. 
so that we knew everything was then covered. And then to reinforce that, we went through um, decisions and action items in the meeting note, in the minutes or the meeting notes. I think you need to send out minutes for corrections and clarity as soon as possible. Um, I, I am committed to that because it makes people do the minutes and the notes, right? Many times we move on so quickly to whatever our next task is that we kind of lose track of the minutes and the notes and then someone either the note taker, a secretary, an administrative assistant is preparing those notes just before the next meeting when the meeting agenda is ready to go out. And it can be very difficult to um, remember what it is you talked about <laughs> and the decisions that were made or what this actually, this scribble in your notes actually says, right? So I believe in sending out those minutes pretty quickly after the meeting to see if anyone has any additions, corrections, or clarity um, before they are turned into a, a final document that can then be shared at the next meeting. And then I believe in sending out calendar invitations for the next meeting um, immediately after the meeting you're in, set it, as a standing meeting and sent those calendar invites early on in the process as you've agreed to meet the second Tuesday of the month or whatever, um, send that calendar invitation for the next meeting out so that it is on their calendars rather than it um, surprising people and they say, oh, I didn't have that on my calendar. I can't meet today. I can't meet today. I didn't have that on my calendar. All right. I have provided some links for you here um, related to more materials from, um, actually there's a user design article here that is full of the Dilbert cartoons related to meeting activities. So you might find some in there that you would um, like to use yourself on an agenda someday. Um, there are also more tips. I have shared with you four different types of meetings, a resource that lists the four different types of meetings. But you will also, if you do your own research, find that there are other descriptions of meetings and many sources go well beyond the four different types. Um, I tried to simplify it into four different types and to be able to say that there are bits and pieces of those four different types that go into some meetings, um, even if they're a different type of meeting. And here's my contact information. So Shelby, um, how else can I help you? Are there topics that I'm missing that people would like me to cover? Um, does anybody have any other topics or any questions at this time? Um, just please feel free to unmute yourself or put them in the chat. Either way works for us. Um, I think it was great. I mean, I'm not gonna take a walking meeting, but cause I might get a little distracted by all the cars that walk by or the people or the birds. Um, but I thought that was great. I mean, having different options and that kind of stuff for sure. Good. Was there anything else that stood out for people as something you'd maybe like to try that you've never given a thought to? Hey, Ann, this is David Fisher. How are you? I'm good, David. What can I do for you? Good. A question. So I'm in, I'm in work at U.S. Bank. and I'm in the uh, wealth management space. So I'm often in person uh, with, with a client or a client's family. But occasionally I'm bringing people in digitally mm -hmm. uh, where I've got a specialist who's in another city. Do you have any tips on how do you do that and do it well? Um, I find that sometimes people get overwhelmed. They can't. Um, you know, just the nature of they can't hear, there's a delay. Do you have any tips on, on fighting that in 2021? Sure. Um, one of the things that I really encourage is giving people the option to check out the technology beforehand if you're able to do that um, so that they make sure they can hear. The other thing I would say is 
um, is it possible, David, if they're not able, like they're having trouble with the video, they're not able to hear, is it possible that you can do that, um, that call or that meeting via old fashioned conference calling instead? Yes, yes, and we've resorted to that before. And oftentimes I'll have, I'll have the customer with me but I'm bringing a partner, but they can't hear them. Or, but sometimes it's the other way around, right? Sometimes the family lives far. Uh, so we do try to try to test it ahead of time, but that's what we've done is just to go back to audio only. We'll email the agenda. We'll email some PDFs, but but uh, didn't know if you had any that I would that. say is I have encouraged uh, my husband in this Zoom era, and I have done lots of conferences related to our kids. And um, instead of my husband and I both trying to be on one camera at one computer, we have taken up the habit of moving to two different spaces, even within our house, um, two different laptops, or maybe he's on his phone, I'm on the laptop, because um, it can be very difficult, especially if people are relying on one internal microphone on a laptop to be able to hear somebody who's not directly in front of that microphone that can be very difficult. So that's the other tip that I would give you is to encourage people maybe to divide and conquer if they have to do that. That's a great tip. I like that a lot because sometimes we do have that issue. So appreciate that feedback. Thank you. Sure. Anything else?